Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Tom Stewart here with Cleaning Business Today, and I'm with my partner, Liz Trotter. And uh, this is our uh, daily uh, 5 o'clock Eastern time call to uh, discuss uh, what's up with, uh, with the coronavirus. Um, today, we're going to be taking some time. We're going to be telling it like it is as it pertains to going to the Small Business Administration website and applying for a 7A loan. Um, yesterday, we talked about what was in our circle of influence and what wasn't in our circle of influence. And we really don't want to be burning a lot of calories, fretting over things that are really beyond our control. But one thing that is in our control is we can all, as business owners, go to the Small Business Administration website and go through that application process. I think most of us have not yet done that. Uh, there have been some changes over the last couple of days in terms of how that whole process works, and we're gonna we're gonna walk you we're gonna walk you through that. Um, so get your we, laptops out, folks. Um, I know that uh, the piece of legislation that was uh, in the House passed today, and I understand um, it was actually signed into law. I have a PowerPoint uh, deck here that shows you just a little bit of what that's about at a high level. And here we go with the whole PPP uh, thing again, but I'll fix that. I love it when it does that, actually. Yeah. Hey, Sarah. When I was in college, they warned me that might happen sometime later in my life, and I never believed them. <laughs> Here's some resources I'm going to copy and paste in the um, in the thread that gives you more more detail about uh, what they're calling the CARES Act, the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act. Um, a big part of this is the SBA loan program, and it's a program called 7A. It's been around for a while, but they've made changes to it specifically for, for to deal with uh, the coronavirus and the impact it's having on business owners. Um, the amount of money you can apply for is equal to your average monthly payroll times 2.5. So basically, it's two and a half months worth of your payroll. The exact calculation for how to do that, we'll save that for another time. I don't even know my, I don't know that myself at the moment, but just give you some idea of, of, of which money we're talking about. And you can use that money to cover payroll, to uh, cover employee salaries, to um, mortgage rent utilities, insurance premiums, and any other debt you have. If you've got bank notes or car payments or anything that's, some type of note you can use it for that. There's an opportunity to have that loan or at least part of it forgiven. Um, the monies that you use to cover payroll or to cover interest payments or rents or, 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 or utilities uh, for the eight week period after you get the loan can be forgiven. Basically, it turns into a, a, a grant. You don't have to pay it back provided that your payroll doesn't, uh, you don't lay anybody off. Um, if you've already laid people off, you can bring them back on and, can, and, and, and still qualify for that grant. If it makes sense to do that or not, it's really complicated and that's for another discussion as well, but that's just kind of kind of how it works. I got a um, question, Tom, real quick. Yeah. On that one, is that the ten thousand dollar grant that everybody's talking about, or is that something different? Um, it's the the application process is the same. You go to the SBA website by applying for that seven A loan. You're a, a candidate for that ten thousand dollar, you know, grant as well. Um, but, but my question is: is the ten thousand dollar grant that everyone's talking about? Is that what you were just showing right there? That's something, That's something different, different, right? That's okay. like free money right up front just okay. because you are business employing people. Okay. Um, I don't know all the criteria 
for, for, for that at the moment. It might be out there. I don't know. We're going to be, be researching that over the weekend and try to get more, more information on that. The, uh, Tom, I just have the, to say real quick, I'm glad I know you. <laughs> I'm really glad I know you. Thank you for doing all let's this. Be, let's be honest. It's a mixed bag, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there are times, right? But for right now, I, I'm, I'm really glad I know you. Thanks for uh, taking this on for us all, too. I really appreciate it. See, I have to say it on here so that I don't have to say it just one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> Fair enough. Good stuff, Tom. <laughs> Okie dokie. Um, do we want to uh, like just jump right into the SBA website and, and, and kind of go through the steps for, for how we do this? Would that be helpful? Mm -hmm. okay. I, I think people will love that, Tom. So here we go. We're going to do the... Can you guys see my screen? Is this okay? Yeah. Oh, I did want to talk about one one thing while you're doing this too, Tom. So there is some, um, there's conversation going on. Should I or shouldn't I? What if I am like a Dave Ramsey follower and I don't believe in taking out loans? And, you know, Dave Ramsey is suggesting right now, no, don't take out a loan. Uh, he's recommending that you not, that instead you, you know, cut, cut expenses and, um, do, do all the things. So um, I don't know. What, what, what do you what do you think about that for our industry, our people? And is there another side, or is it just you know? Bottom line is, do what your conscience tells you to do. You need to be. Like, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, you, you have to do what your conscience tells you to do. Um, alone is a is, is a tool. Um, you need to be thinking about it as an investment, but. You know, if you have a, a, a shock to your business that you need cash in order to preserve that asset, that business that you've built, then, you know, there's a, I, I, I think the majority of, of business consultants would tell you, you know, you borrow the money to save your business, but the alternative is you, you, you close your business. Now, Dave Ramsey might be saying, you know, can save your business without borrowing the money. Well, if you can do that, that's great. The problem is sitting here now, you don't know six months from now if you're going to be able to do that without outside money. So my, my advice is, well, it's two steps. What we're going to show you today is how to apply for it. And most likely you'll be offered money. At that point, you can make a decision. No, I don't want it. If they want to give you a grant as part of this, $10,000 you nef never have to pay back, it would be my strong advice. And I think Dave Ramsey would agree with this. Take the $10,000 you never have to pay back. Um, but I would take the money that I would have to pay back. And then I would try as hard as I, I, I could not to touch a penny of it and give that back to the government when it's all said and done. And, you know, that that's best case scenario. But we don't have a crystal ball. You might need some of that money to keep your, your business alive for the long run. Well, not, I'm just thinking too, that you can take that money, you put it into a savings account and maybe you collect a little tiny bit of money on it. And you, you know, if it's years down the road and you end up, you didn't need a penny of it and you got to use it, what did it really cost you? Yeah. I think the, uh, the, the amount of interest you're going to be gaining in, in any type of, uh, you know, fixed, you know, asset where you're, you don't have to worry about losing the principal is going to be really, really low. Um, I was on a call a couple of days ago, junking, joking around about borrowing money and putting it in the stock market. And they, we decided we don't even want to joke about that. That is not legally. You can't use these funds. You're limited in what you can use it for. Um, but just, just practically, you know, you're not, you don't use this money to do anything other than invest it in your business. So just, just put it in a, in a, in a savings account and get your 0.01% interest on it, which does nothing but leave, leave the principal. Yeah. My, my point was that even if you're not, um, going to be earning a lot of money on it, you're 100% not losing anything. It's not costing you anything. You're actually, it's in the positive column, not in the negative column. Yep, absolutely. Oh. All right. So Take a step. this is, uh, okay. So you guys can see uh, the SBA website. Yep. 
you go to sba.gov up here at the top this little yellow banner where it says learn more about covid 19 small business information okay so when they first launched this site the idea was that you applied online great idea but in practice it didn't work that well because the website kept crashing so now they've uh, basically redone the program or, or, or the application process where they want you to download a bunch of PDFs and um, and upload, fill them out and, and upload them. If I click here where it says apply online, it brings me to this page. This page has forms to download and we're just going to do that right here. If you're um, a business like an LLC or, or uh, a corporation, you would use number one. If you are, let's go back here just to show. If you are sole proprietor, you would uh, do number two, but it's, it's basically the same process. We're going to pretend that, that, that we're a corporation. And this is the application. So you can actually download this and save it on your computer and then open it up and you can type right in here the type of loan you're applying for is what they call economic injury eidl you put there if you've got you know some military uh experience you might be able to you know take advantage of that here i'm not really familiar about that um how that works but if you're a corporation you would click there and then you put in your company name. So on and so forth. You can just fill out each one of these. And when you're done, you can print it and, 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 and sign it and scan it. Because what you're going to do with this form, along with several other forms that you're going to fill out, is you're going to drag them and drop them here. And you're going to upload them. And then you're done. You, you've applied. But there's several forms that you're going to have to do. You're going to have to do this loan application. You're also going to have to do number three, which is the injury disaster loan supporting information. And you just answer these basic questions. And if you should be able to get these numbers right out of QuickBooks. Um, if you if you don't, you can get them from whoever does your taxes for you. It's a very simple form, though. You'll need to sign this in data as well. And that would need to be uploaded. If I go back here, and I'm going to go, this form is not terribly long. It's uh, just like two pages of stuff you're filling out. But it's got this part here. It says there's other things that you need to do. You need to fill out a what they call an IRS form 4506T. And basically, that's giving the Small Business Administration access to your tax information and your, your, the, your, your, the taxes that you filed. And that form is over here. And again, you know, it's not terribly difficult. It's just a one-page thing, and you fill it out, print it, and sign it. I'm just going to check in real quick. Sarah, Bridget, Heather, uh, is this what you guys were hoping to see? Is there anything else that Tom should be showing on here? Yeah. Uh, somebody had mentioned, Tom, that on the loan, on the two page, that there were questions, and I can't remember which numbers. I want to say 14, 15, 16, 17. Hey, good, Bridget. Um, that, that thing always messes with me. That they are just skipping for some reason. Can you look at those questions and see what those might be? We're going back in. Yeah. All right. And, and I can't remember exactly which ones they were. Maybe you could look at. We can't really see them, or I can't any anyway. Can you guys 
see my screen? Yeah, it's just really small. I have right. a small screen, so. How about that? Oh, yes, yeah, so much better. Okie dokie. Um, business yeah, activity. Yeah. I'm sorry, sorry, Liz? sorry, Karen was saying you need your PL. Uh, need a PL statement form 1368. We'll, we'll get to that, Karen. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we're good with how to fill these detail. Like number 15. What's 15. Your, yep, number 15. Um, I, I think zero goes in all of this because this is more for if you got hit with a storm or something, a hurricane. Um, your dad, you haven't lost any equipment. You haven't had any real estate damage. You haven't lost your inventory or any any uh, improvements you've made to a property that you've done. So all of these would be zero. Okay. Yep, that's the one that everybody's asking. Do I just skip it? Should I put something in there? Just you don't can skip check it. Okay, zero. But, you, but, but the fact that you're filling out applying for economic injury, EIDL, they'll know that this is because you've lost business because of the coronavirus and they would not be expecting to see anything here. So you can leave it blank or put zero either one. You'll be fine. Right now, you guys, we're just talking about applying for the loan. So we'll, we'll answer your questions in just a second. This is just showing how to apply for the loan. Oh, um, so, I'm sorry, I misunderstood what Heather was uh, maybe we better answer these questions real quick, Tom. So, so this loan is to help pay payroll, whether we are open or closed. That's what Sarah wants to know. In part, you can okay. definitely use it for that. You can okay. use it to cover rent. You can use okay. it to cover your bank notes. Um, Mortgage. Anything that was in place or not anything but they have to have been in place as of February. Heather wants to know also, is this the, is this the form, I think she means form here, to bring up paying our staff or letting them collect unemployment to pay the loan back or get a grant? We have already no. laid off, okay. Not that yet, Heather. And no. then Sarah says, I heard we should be paying employees that are working extra all that are working, we should be paying them extra since the unemployment pay pay is so high and incentive to work. Yep, we're not there yet. Hey, Denise, it says to put question marks in number 15. You may do that too if you actually, that implies you actually incurred a loss. You just don't know how much it was. Mm -hmm. So if a, if, a, if a tornado blows your building away, you know you have property damage, but you might not know how much that would you'd put a question mark there. In this case, you do know that your building is is I presume to be fine, so that would be either yeah. blank or zero. You could also put N A in there. You may do that. It's not applicable. My my hunch is that they're gonna be getting so many of these that you know, I have no idea how they're going to underwrite all this. I mean, they're just going to, I presume they're just going to be rubber stamping the stuff. They, they wouldn't have time to read it, I wouldn't think. I don't know. Um, Bridget's asking about number 16, Tom. She's thinking we leave that blank as well. So I was thinking maybe we should run through the questions real quick. Okay. Insurance coverage. Yeah, that doesn't apply because there is no insurance for they, yeah, 15 and 16 and all this about policy number, all of that has to do if you're applying for, you see, they got like, most of this has to do with physical damage, real property, business contents, you know, your inventory gets washed away. If you're doing economic injury, there is no insurance, there is no loss to, of inventory or, you know, real estate or whatever. So 15, 16. Would, would be empty. 17, this is your information. You would do that. You would do uh, How do you determine if you put in your SSN or your EIN? Um, it's going to the owner. If, if the owner is you as an individual, you know, Liz Trotter, Tom Stewart, it would be, your, the name would be 
Thomas Stewart, that's what my mother called me, and my personal social security number. Um, if you have like an LLC that owns your cleaning business, then it would be, you know, some name LLC and it would be the EIN of that LLC. For most, of us, for most of us, I believe we as individuals own our businesses, so it would be our personal stuff. Um, Tom, uh, let's see, Karen is asking, what if we had contractors and not employees for a number of employees? What should they put under number of employees? I don't even know what that Where is that question? That is a good it's question. It's uh, here somewhere. I totally want to say, over the rainbow. It is here it is. Number 12. somewhere. Yeah. I don't know the question. I can. I mean, I don't know the answer 100%. If I were filling it out, I would count them as employees, even though they aren't, but I might be wrong. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I would too, Karen. I would let them come back and tell me, hey, those weren't employees. Those were subcontractors because they don't have a place to fill in the number of subcontractors. If they have I do. Know, I, I do understand the, the 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 new legislation that became law today that um, independent contractors will be able to apply for a lot of the same benefits that employees will be able to in terms of uh, lost wages and so forth, unemployment. So it which seems is, like information belongs here somewhere. Okay, so Sam says, so on the personal information, if we are an LLC filing taxes as a sole prop, then it is just all our personal info? For an LLC, it depends where. Um, if you're an LLC, um, my cleaning company, LLC, the applicant's legal name would be my cleaning company, comma, LLC. And the presumption would be that you've got a federal ID for that LLC and you would plug that in there. Down here, if you as an individual, if Samantha Snyder owns that LLC, then you would put your name here. And if you owned it 100%, you'd put on 100%. If you owned 50% and you know, somebody else owns 50%, you would put your name there and I mean, you're the person applying for it. There's somewhere else that you list. So is that where she would put her social security there then? She put her EIN earlier, then put her SSN there? This would be, this would be her personal social security information, yes. And yes, if you've got really blank. sorry. I'm sorry? Um, Sam had asked, I said, yes, Sam, to the 16 blank. Yep. Yep. 16 blank. So if you've got a partner and you're like, you know, 50, 50, then you put your partner's name here and that would be 50% and you'd have their social security number there and, and so forth. So we've got this form, which is the application. We've already looked at this little simple form here, which they call the supporting information. And this you can get out of QuickBooks or, or your, your, your accountant can give that to you. Gonna go back over here though, because this information right in here is the other stuff that we need to do. So that form uh, 4506, which you're, you're giving Small Business Administration the right to pull your, in it, your the tax uh, returns that you've, you've filed. Um, they want you to actually upload your most recent uh, federal income tax return for the business. So this is a personal tax return. This is your, the tax return for your company my cleaning company comma LLC, their tax return. But, you also, uh, but for Sam, if she is 
um, an LLC filing personally, it will be her personal tax return, right? Nope. Let's go back to this again, because this is confusing. The applicant, the person that's, a, the, the, the legal entity that's applying for the loan is the LLC. Okay. If I were doing this, I would, the, the, it would be castle keepers, okay? Yep. And I don't know what the federal ID is, but there is one, okay? I don't know whatever it is. And all the information down here about castle keepers. Once I get down here to the owners, I would have my name and we'll just say 100% to keep it easy. My email address. You're going to type in yeah. your personal social security number there, Tom? Yeah, I am. Oh, it's easy to oh, remember. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, and you plug in your personal social security number there. Okay. And your marital status, your birthday, which is in some year, I don't know, I can't remember, it was a while ago. Okay, and so Linda is double-checking that if the business is asking for um, under number 17, it is asking for a business entity owner. As a corporation, will that be empty or still put the personal information there again? As a corporation, somebody owns the business. Every business has an owner. Uh, the business would you know, there are businesses that own businesses, okay? Like there's holding companies that own other businesses. My, and you might have a structure like that, but 99% of us, we as individuals own our company. We might have partners where there might be two or three individuals that own it, but so you're putting whoever the legal entity is here who owns the business, who owns the stock, who 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 owns the, the equity in the business. So Tom, can you explain the difference? We have number 17 has owner and then legal name, social security number, and then it has legal name again. So in case you have multiple um, people, right, as owners. But then if you yes. go below that, it shows it says business entity owner name. What's the difference? Oh, okay. This would be an example where it's not a person, it is another business that owns okay. that. Business. And that's why it says type of business there. Yes. Okay, that makes sense. All right, is that answering everybody's questions around the section? See, it's um, it can be confusing because there's so many different things that all look very, very similar. Okay, if it's not, hit us up, otherwise, Looks like we can continue on. Do we okay. need to go through any of these yes, no questions? How how easy are those, Tom? Hopefully they're all no, because if they're yes, that might be problematic. You know, they want to know if you've ever been bankrupt. You want to, they want to know if uh, you, you know, there are any you know, judgments against you on just, you know. Um, has the business or listed owner ever had? Numbers, numbers D, D, not number D. How about letter D? Has the doesn't really sound that bad. Right. Yeah, I mean, you might be okay with that. I suspect it would be problematic if, you know, you've been bankrupt or like E, if that's yes, you're delinquent in your taxes, that would probably be, be, be a problem. But the questions are what they are. You need to answer, you answer them honestly. Yeah, you, you don't really have a choice there. Yeah. 19 is kind of the same deal here. You know, are you a subject of, you know, an indictment or aim, you know, blah, 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 blah. Probably be, you know, if you could say that, no, that probably makes it a little bit simpler. But again, you got to, you know, fill, these, fill all this out honestly. All right, let's see. Bridget says, that's a business entity owner part with two partners will be NA. So yes, because you would have filled those two names up above under legal name. 
you wouldn't have a business entity owner. So again, we got the application, we've got this supporting information, which is like a one pager. You need to do this IRS form here that gives uh, Small Business Administration the ability to access your all the tax information that they're going to want. And we also have to do a, just two more documents. Um, schedule of liabilities and the personal finance statement. This is basically a form where you're going to put down who you owe money to. This is the instructions, I guess. Um, there's downloads for the instructions for some of these forms too, if you're you're not clear. But why do I keep doing that? You're looking for a form 2202, not the instructions for 2202. Instructions. Go up. Schedule, uh, schedule up. Go schedule right here. There you go. But it. <laughs> Maybe keep going. Oh, there it is. I wonder why they have the instructions separate. I wonder if they're. Uh, maybe they've got them backwards. This is the form. Okay. So when they say instructions, it's not the instructions, it's the actual form. So they can't, I don't know how they're going to process all this. They can't even get the links right on the website. I don't feel optimistic right now. <laughs> or right. I should feel more optimistic, right? They're just going to be like rubber stamp, rubber stamp, rubber stamp. <laughs> We're in trouble, guys. <laughs> okay, now, so this is like a one pager and you just, you know, who you owe money to. If you, you know, have a car note, you put that there and, you know, how much you still owe on it, the date you got it, the original amount and what you pay each month. You know, if you got, uh, you know, it's going to be bank notes. If you got like a, a, a line of credit, if you got some type of, you know, loan for, for whatever, this oh, is money card. you owe. Credit cards. Fine. I would put yeah. that. Heck yeah. But, I would, but, I would put as much money. but what about your power bill? That's money you owe. Mm, that's not a liability. That's an expense. It's not. Um, so what's how do you explain that? Maybe explain. Sorry? So maybe explain that a little bit more. You know, a loan, a lot of people are confused by that. These are loans. This is money that you've borrowed that you have to pay back. So you borrowed money to buy a car or to buy cars. You borrowed money to buy equipment. You borrowed money to buy an office. You borrowed money just as a line of credit to do other stuff with. And you said, I'm going to pay you back over the next 60 months with this monthly payment. Typically, there is like a, a monthly payment associated with it. And some interest probably. In interest, yeah, there's interest associated with these things. All right, we got a question here from Bert on the personal financial statement. Do we fill one out for the business as well as the owners? Example: Heather, Bert, and one organized mom. Okay. Personal financial statement. We haven't gotten to that one yet. Are we? Are we? We'll go up answer in just a second. Are we okay with the liabilities? Anybody? I just know a lot of people get confused between liabilities and expenses, but I think you explained it well enough. Yep. This is, so the question was about this form here? Um, yes, I think so. Yep. And then Sarah is asking only for the business, not personal, even if you're an S corp, eh? Talking about this form here? He's talking to you guys, Bert and Sarah. Is this the form you all are talking about? This, Go over it anyway, Tom. This form here is personal. This is you. This is the human being you setting here. This is Tom Stewart. This is Liz Trotter. This is 
the, the, the financial information pertaining to the people whose names are on, on, on 17 of this form here. Okay, so um, this is what Bert and Denise and everybody's looking for. Sarah's question was back about liabilities. She wanted to know liabilities only for the business, not personal, even if you're an S Corp. Correct. If you've got personal credit cards or like a, a car or, you know, like a, like a mortgage on your house, that would not be included because those are your liabilities, not liabilities of your company. Remember, your company is who's applying for this loan. This is the last thing we have to do. And this is what they call a personal financial statement. Um, I would guess we've probably have filled these out before in some form or fashion. A lot of times if you're borrowing money from, from a bank, they want to see something like this. Um, Tom, I have a question. Up at the very top right hand corner, it says expiration date 331. Ah, 2021. 2021. Never mind. I don't have a question. But you, this is you as an individual. How much money do you have in the bank? Savings accounts? I mean, basically, you just need to look at what you got and put the dollar amounts down. You got to pick a time frame, by the way. This is as of. Um, so this doesn't have to be as of today. You might not have all this information, but you could do it as of, say, 12 31 19 might be a little bit easier i can tell you that's what i did um just because you got all your year in stuff and all your statements and everything's just a little bit easier than having to track down numbers that you might not have have readily um available but over here like your liabilities in terms of money you are currently current bills that you have and notes that 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 you owe to to banks and so on and so forth and if you're really stuck on this i would probably get with the person that does your taxes i don't know i don't think they've got instructions for this <laughs> No, no instructions. This is probably the trickiest part down here. A lot of information wanted there. Yeah. Notes payable. I mean, who, what, you know, this is you personally. I think uh, somebody, somebody, Sarah, maybe you were asking like your personal debt, like, yeah, if you've got a house note, if you got a mortgage, you, you, you bought a house and you got a mortgage, that information would go, go here. Um, they want to know if you own stocks, bonds, stuff like that. Want to know what real estate you own. Do you have any taxes you haven't paid? Other liabilities? Do you have life insurance? They want it all. Sheesh. I hope they're not going to reduce because of life insurance or something. What the heck? But this know, is just their opportunity to find out every single freaking thing they can about you. Yeah, they, they know it. They they know they know this anyway, but. Um, I'm not a CPA. I'm not an expert with, with how, you know, the, the SBA does its thing. I've filled a number of these out in the past and I've never had any, you know, my experiences, nobody expects us to be, you know, right to the, you know, last penny, just, you know, 
be honest don't make stuff up and don't consciously hide stuff but just do do the best you can and again the volume of these things that they're going to be getting is such that they're not going to have time to go through all this that's my guess so bridget wants to know what would be a good time frame three months or last year do they do they give you okay. that well a lot of these, these assets and liabilities there is no time frame it is if you can if you want to do this say you know at the beginning of march or you know at the at the end of 2019 i wouldn't go back any further than the beginning of 2019 but just take a, pick a date you know i'm going to do this 12 31 19 and i'm not typing for some reason while he's doing that denny the answer to your question is bridget's got it here for you 2202 Oh, that's the uh, liability form? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if that's the date you picked, then you would go back and look at your statements I would in at, at, for that particular date. And you have the bank statement for that particular date. And, you know, if you, you add $5,000 in the bank, then it would be $5,000. So it's not, it's not like how many you know how much revenue did i generate or how much money did i make it's like just that snapshot in time whatever date you pick here you know how many assets you know give me give me the assets you held and you know the, the money that you had and the in the, in the the other assets you had and the the debt and liabilities and how much you owed other people does that make sense basically the information on your balance sheet isn't it tom it is this is balance sheet yeah so it's, that's kind of easy, just get that info from your balance sheet or your accountant if you don't know how to wear. The trick, the tricky part, okay. but this isn't, this isn't your company now. This isn't like getting the balance sheet from XYZ Cleaning Company, Inc. This is your per Tom Stewart's personal balance sheet or Liz Trotter's personal balance yeah. sheet. Actually, a lot of people won't have uh, a personal balance sheet if they don't have any kind of like we have one in it personally because of real estate holdings. So we've had to go through this exercise, but probably most people aren't going to have this, are they? No, nope. unless you've done it before. I've done this in the past for like getting other loans and stuff and working with banks over the years. So I usually just dust off the old one I have and update a couple numbers and, and go with it. Uh, Gina has, uh, some a question here, Tom. Cleaning companies lack inventory of any significant value. Some of us hold notes on the cars in the fleet. I'm basically personally guaranteeing the loan, correct? Who the guarantor is, if you're guaranteeing a note that actually is for your business, if, if your cleaning company took out a loan to buy a car and you personally are guaranteeing that, that's a liability for your company, not for you personally. So that would not show up here. That would be, that would show up on this guy here because that's your company's note. Even though you personally are guaranteeing it, it's still technically a liability of your company, not you personally. Not a personal one, okay. And then she says, wondering if it doesn't make more sense to apply for a line of credit based on residential property that I hold the note on Question mark. Yet yeah, there's discussion of these SBA loans converting to grant to grants. So there's that. And then Sarah's also asking uh, about the grant let me, aspect. Let me, let, me do, let me do this. Let me back out of, of this. I just want to go over real quickly that we've got the application that we need to do, and we've got the disaster loan supporting documentation, and those we download from like one and three, or if you're sole proprietor, it would be two and three. In addition to that, you need to do this guy here, your, your personal financial statement. You need to do the schedule of liabilities for your business. And you need to do this uh, 4506, which gives 
SBA, the ability to uh, get into all your online tax stuff with the IRS. So it's those five things and you download it, you can fill it out within uh, Adobe Reader if you want to and print it out and sign it. And you're gonna have to scan it all back in and you then upload it. You just kind of drag it and drop it there and you're done. So, all right, Tom. So, Sarah's asking these are the loans that we imagine will be forgivable, correct? Um, some of it may be forgivable. Um, Under certain circumstances? Certain circumstances. If you're if you don't have a reduction in force, if you employ the same amount of people before the note, before you get the loan as you, I mean, excuse me, after you, you get the loan as you did before you get it, then there's a number of expenses that you that you can basically write off and, and, and basically not have to pay the, the, the loan amount for those back, like uh, your payroll expenses, your uh, space. Let me see. We had that here in a PowerPoint dot. Um, payroll, mortgage, rent, insurance premiums, and other debt obligations could actually be. Uh, no, I got that wrong. Payroll, interest payments on mortgages, rent, and utilities. All of those for. Uh, eight week period could could uh, be treated as a grant. The payroll, though, I'm not sure if that's a hundred percent or maybe fifty percent. I've the most recent stuff I've I've, I've seen suggested you might not even be able to get credit for a hundred percent of that payroll, but maybe part of it. Uh, so, okay. and, and if, if I could just elaborate, yeah. that's why I wanted to spend most of the time on how to go to the SBA website and fill out those five documents and upload them because that's all we know for, for, for sure at this point in terms of, of, of what we want to be doing. And if you don't want the loan at the end, then you don't have to take it, but you're going to be better off having that option than not having that option. And, you know, if you qualify for the $10,000 grant up front, this would be, you know, part of that process as well. So you don't have to, if you fill out these five documents, you are doing everything that needs to be done to qualify for that $10,000 grant that it keeps being thrown around, correct? There's that nothing my, else to do. That's my understanding. Okay. It's, it is my, at the very least, you're going to have to do this in order to get in line for it. If there's one other thing that you have to do or other things that you have to do, we'll let you know that next week. But okay. The sooner you get onto this, the better off you're 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 going to be. All right, let's see. Um, then Karen says, if you have employees still working, I believe. So uh, let let's hit that in a second because Linda's question is easier, and I'll let you hit Karen again. Karen says, do we add our latest business tax return or wait to see if they request it? That's part of that was listed on there, wasn't it, Tom? I thought I remember saying. Yeah, you're supposed to be uploading. Your your business tax return is part of this. It's, it's it would be part it, of it, it would be the most recent one you filed. If you filed your 2019, you would upload that. If you haven't uh, filed that yet, if you're working off an extension, you would have to do your 2018. All right, and then Karen is saying she's talking about the grant, um, and she's thinking that the. You see what she's saying here, Tom. If you have employees still working, I believe, and a certain percentage of employees, I'm not exactly sure. I, I think she's giving information, but I'm not exactly sure what it is. The 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 the, the formula. There's going to be a formula that's going to calculate if your loan, if part of your loan, can be turned into a grant. And it's going to be based on. The number of people you had working for you after you got the money as opposed to what was working for you before you got the money and even if you had a reduction in force to some degree there's a ratio where 
if you still got some people working for you, then still some of that money can can be turned into a grant. Not it's, it's it's a smaller amount, but you know, it's going to take a to book people. I mean, the 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 one of the, one of the things that is becoming really clear to me is you take you know managing the funds to figure out if your loans are grant and all of that and lump over this the the additional requirements are going to be placed on us as employers in terms of the paid fmla and the paid sick time and you know if you think if you, if you spend you know whoever does your bookkeeping if you do that yourself if you're you're spending a lot of time on that now you're going to be spending a lot more time on it you know you know we don't, we don't even we don't even know what we don't know at this point, but I, I just fear that it's going to be a lot of red tape. So way up at the top here, there were a couple of questions. I said, well, we're going to get to that later. Let's get through the forms first. Um, let me see if I can find those. I think Sarah, oh yeah, she says, okay, I'll slow down. Um, all right, so here's what Heather was saying. Um, oh wait, first let me hit Heather's. Is this the forum to bring up paying, or oh, the forum, she is asking about the forum. Is this the forum to bring up paying our staff or letting them collect unemployment to pay the loan bank back or get a grant? We've already laid off 11 of our 28 staff members. She wants to know if this is the right place to be asking that question. It's certainly a fair question to, to ask. Um, honestly, I don't think there's an obvious answer to that there's still a lot of gray area in terms of all of these laws that have, have gone through over the last week here, exactly how they're going to be applied. One thing, one, one, one thing I, I do believe to be true, I, mean, I, I saw this and this makes sense, that as far as the paid FMLA and the, and the paid sick time, as, as an employer, you've got like a 30 day grace period. I don't think that we even have to start dealing with that until we get into May. Um, that's my, that's my understanding. That's good. So that's we, good information. We got a little bit of time to figure that out. Um, but every, you know, every, I think, I think, I think, I think once we actually have all the rules and can with confidence kind of do the math and weigh the risks and the benefits for the various options that we have, the answers are going to be different for, for, for different scenarios, different businesses. And we're not all going to, you know, the best decision for all of us is going to be different. I think we kind of have the same situation with Sarah's question here. I heard we should be paying employees that are working, that are working extra since the unemployment pay is so high and incentive to work. This is going to be like a whole big topic there too. That there's not one clear answer currently around that. Yeah. Um, we got a couple extra comments here. Um, Sarah says, thanks for the work on this. It's a lot for you too. We appreciate it. Yeah, um, I, I agree, especially Tom's putting a lot of work into this. And then Sarah says, that takes some of the pressure off. I thought I had to figure it out um, by April 1st because that April 1st deadline that everybody's talking about, right? Um, mm -hmm. Make sure that you, which I'm gonna ask you about in just a second. Linda says, one last question about copies of tax return. Does Form 4506T cover that so that you do not have to send a copy? Sorry, just a little confused. Now you still have to upload a copy. Yes. Yeah, you do have to upload a copy, Linda. Um, back to the April 1st deadline, Tom. What's that for? I don't even remember. Okay. The law that women that it's going to be going into a fact that <clears throat> requires us to be paying for FMLA and for, 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 for sick pay. I think it was written April 2nd, but Don Finn, who is a really great labor attorney who keeps up on all of this stuff, came up with a paper that said actually April 1st is, is kind of the effective date. So if you're thinking about letting anybody go, so you're not going to be liable for that, you know, you want to do that before April 1st and you want to do that March 31st, which is a very special date. And that's on Tuesday. 
Tom's being funny because that's my birthday. And his birthday is the next day, April 1st, April Fool's Day. Not going to say anything about that either, Tom. <laughs> no, no, no. So we always go back and forth about that, you know. Yeah. And we have a 30-day grace period before we actually have to start complying with filling all of the paperwork and stuff out as it pertains to some of you know those benefits. It's not clear to me, though, that we still might not be responsible for eventually paying that because, you know, I mean, we might we might still if somebody comes in you know, April 2nd and says, you know, I need to apply for FMLA because yada, yada, yada. We might have, we might have a, a few weeks to, to figure out how to do that. But once we figure out how to do it, we might have to pay them from the beginning. Right. We might not. I don't know. That's, that's, that's part of what we don't know. I have to believe that with all of the stuff that's coming out so quickly and when we have so many people that are intelligent, putting a lot of effort and time into understanding it and still having so much confusion that I, I cannot believe that there is an expectation that this is just going to be smooth as silk and we're just going to fine you if you haven't done this on the exact right date. And, you know, I, it's hard to believe that 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 I can't even imagine that they have the manpower to be able to do some of that stuff. How are they even going to make all this happen? Three point three million people filed for unemployment last week, and the weekly record prior to that was less than seven hundred thousand, going back to the beginning of time. So, what is that like? Almost five times is 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 we beat the we beat, we beat the, the record by know, four and a half times. So think about the mountains of paperwork. Think about the mountains of paper, paperwork that the SBA is going to be dealing with. I mean, I, mind boggles. Mind boggles. <laughs> yeah. I thank you guys for the birthday wishes. Birthday wishes, Tom. Hey, thank you. Yeah, and uh, we're we're happy to to be doing this. Uh, it's even though it is everybody else is really appreciating it. I, I think you guys all know by now that the fastest way to learn about something is teach somebody else about it. And while we're not technically teaching anybody about anything, just knowing that you got to come on here every single day and share the best information. Uh, that's really forcing us to look harder, pay better attention, and to, to uh, understand the information better. So it, there's a little bit of uh, self-serving stuff going on here, too. Win-win. Uh, yeah. yeah, totally win-win there. Uh, thanks, Linda. Uh, I, I mean, I, I feel like it's just... Uh, super, super blessing to be able to give anything back. I mean, I, I know I personally feel lucky to have Tom <laughs> to be able to figure all this stuff out. And I, I, I'll tell you guys, I'm the one that pushed him to do this. He was like, there's nobody's going to care. I'm like, oh, you're so wrong. You need to get on there. You, I mean, nobody researches this stuff better than he does. He can't get away from it. He can't. I, I've stayed at his place with uh, he and his wife before. And this is, his, this is your life when nothing's going on. Six in the morning until 11 o'clock at night, you're doing this stuff. So I, I, I knew that you would be the person to do it. And so I'm just jumping on too. Um, to, yeah, right, Sarah, we need you guys. Well, not so much me. I'm just the the, the hand gesture here, yeah. but absolutely. It's, um, we, it's definitely. Uh, a yeah. And tomorrow yeah. for sure, Sam will be here or not tomorrow. Sorry, Saturday. Yeah, but, Monday, uh, Monday at five. Yeah, Monday through Friday. Um, Sam wants to know, how can we learn more about the stay at home um, paid time off time in the bill? <laughs> There's a couple of links, several links that I'll be posting 
Can I can I show the website? Please. Also, um, the Arxy link, the Don Finn stuff that he sent out, that's that's amazing too. Sam, actually, you have this information in the MMA group, in the growth MMA group. Go there. I already posted all the information you could ever want about that. But um, we'll, we'll be posting, and I'll show you some links. We'll be posting um, on our resource page. This is Cleaning Business Today uh, over here. If you haven't subscribed, um, if you guys want, if you guys want to help help us out, Derek and, and me and, and and Liz, just just subscribe to this because we just send out a newsletter, and the more newsletters we send out, uh, just. The, 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 the more the word gets out, you think that's important. Um, if you haven't read the article here on like some of the science behind what's going on with the coronavirus and how the chain of infection works and how what we do as uh, cleaning companies using hygienic cleaning methods can break the chain of infection. This is uh, stuff you need to know and incorporate in your training. If you go up here, to the, the website and go to coronavirus dash downloads. Takes you to our resources. Yesterday we uploaded um, uh, a, a word document that that we use to made to give to cleaning technicians that, that shows that they're um, essential. Um, Here's a, a, a resource here. This is uh, some IRS information related to um, how the, the paid leave tax credits work. Kind of oh, gets into the question that, that, that Sam was asking. I didn't know you put that up there. That's good. I like that, Tom. Um, <laughs> Go ahead, Tom. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. And there's other links that, that we'll be posting there over the next couple of days, too. We'll, we'll try to load that up. And if anybody else has information that would be useful, share it with us. And we'll uh, we'll, 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 we'll try to get that out to everybody, too. Oops. Where are we? Oh, no. That's a good link, though. Um, Tom, I have a request on your Tell It Like It Is segment on Monday. If you could give us some information about the rumor that's going around that there are these humongous fines for mentioning, even mentioning disin the word disinfect in your advertising or um, on your website. If you could felt like it is around some of that stuff, that would be awesome. The number sure. I heard today was $30,000. That, that was the fine. You don't have to, you don't have to give us the answer today. You can tell us on Sunday. That'd be awesome. I know you like to have the the real information <laughs> do your due diligence, and I and I appreciate that. So and and, and, and you know the secret behind all of that. My this you think I, I have a question? My wife is is kind I of the, the same way. Janice, some of you know her. Um, I'll ask her the question and just kind of plant the seed and a few hours later I've got like a paper that's giving me sources and references and studies and so yeah you guys are a powerhouse easy. couple for sure <laughs> makes it easy. All right. okay well we're, we're we're a little past the hour it's uh Friday afternoon um give us your your weekend thing Tom I always like it what should we do this weekend we uh, need to get some rest take care of ourselves eat well this is uh, this is stressful stuff and um, you know what I mean one of the reasons that I enjoy doing this is it it, it kind of relieves some of the stress doesn't it I mean we're all kind of in the discussion together and you know we're working this out together and we're gonna gonna be okay together so um, enjoy the weekend. Get some rest, and uh, we'll be back here Monday at five o'clock Eastern. Sounds good. Nice Thanks, day. everybody. Bye. Bye. -bye.